How do you combine note taking with speed learning to essentially download vast amounts of information into your long term memory in a short period of time. So in this video, I'm going to go through how I take notes and store those notes in a database so that I remember everything that I've ever read, at least in theory. So recently I started to dedicate Sundays as my reading days. So I'll go to a coffee shop and read for maybe four hours or eight hours. It really depends on how I'm feeling. The last book I read was a hundred million dollar office by Alex Hamosi. I went to Starbucks with my iPad mini and literally just sat there reading for eight hours while taking notes. So I'm going to go through exactly how I take notes and store them onto my notion database. So essentially I have access to them forever and my note taking process when reading a book is actually very straightforward. So step one, I read the book and highlight the key points with the Apple Pencil. Step two, once I finish reading the book, I'll spend 20 minutes rereading the notes I've highlighted. And this is very important to help you process and retain the notes you've just taken. Step three, I extract the golden nuggets and add them to my Notion knowledge bank. And the main reason for this step is so that you have the notes in your own database forever. And step four, I reread my notes in my Notion knowledge bank at least once a month. And this last step, is by far the most important step out of the whole note taking system. It's a very simple and kind of minimalist note taking system, but it's incredibly powerful. And I love how it combines note taking with speed learning. I personally like reading on my iPad mini. I love how I can seamlessly highlight text and everything that I highlight is automatically stored on the iPad's notebook so I can reread everything that I've highlighted once I've finished the book. And there's two ways in which I will read a book, honestly, depending on how interesting the book is or how kind of boring it is. So firstly, if the book is extremely interesting, I don't like to take notes while I'm reading because I want to be kind of lost in thought and the ideas of the book. If I stop to write out some notes in my own words, I would somewhat lose immersion and it would be kind of disruptive to my focus. So a good middle ground for me at least is highlighting the text with an Apple pencil. So I just have to stop for literally a few seconds to highlight the text and then I can keep going. And as a side note, I don't know what it is, but there's something quite, I don't know, satisfying when highlighting text with an Apple pencil. It just makes the whole kind of reading experience a bit more fun, weirdly, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. Alternatively, if you're reading a physical book or a textbook, then an alternative could be to stick a small sticky note or label next to the line to come back later. Again, it's not too disruptive, so it won't affect your flow of reading too much, yet it still remind you that you need to come back to that page to reread it at a later date. Another way in which I will read a book, and I use this method if I'm reading kind of a, a thick, heavy textbook or something not particularly very interesting, is I'll read it in short bursts. So for example, I read a page for five minutes, then I'll switch to another format such as YouTube and research the most interesting topic or concept for five minutes. Then I'll switch back to reading the book for five minutes. Then I'll switch to using a learning platform such as Brilliant, learning about the same topic. And what this does is is it introduces context switching into your learning, meaning that you keep things interesting and you stop yourself from kind of falling into this passive mode of learning when you're reading, but you're not actually absorbing any of the information. It's something that the Brilliant Platform does amazingly well. The best way to learn anything is not by reading books about it, it's by doing it yourself. In fact, a 2015 study at Carnegie Mellon University found interactive learning to be six times more efficient than just reading a book. And that's why I think when you're reading, it can be so beneficial in terms of absorbing information fast by switching your passive learning methods such as reading with active learning methods such as Brilliant who have sponsored this video, but also I've been genuinely using their learning platform for the last year or so now. So I took the cryptocurrency course a few months ago. And even though the topics were, at least in my opinion, quite complex, Brilliant do an amazing job Job at simplifying those complex topics with fun explanations and interactive activities. On top of that, I see Brilliant as almost like an 
antidote to thick, heavy textbooks that are just pages full of tiny black text with no diagrams, right? Brilliant are the opposite, where you have very small paragraphs, you have diagrams, you have quizzes, interactive exercises, and it's just a really refreshing way to learn. So if you are studying or you're just interested in maths or physics or quantitative finance or computer science, then you can head to brilliant.org forward slash Project Elon to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first, I think 200 listeners will also get 20% off an annual membership. And I've dropped a link in the description box to pick up that discount. Another quick tip, or at least something that works for me, is I like reading a page first before taking notes because I'm sure that we've all been there where we've been highlighting a page in a book or taking notes and we just end up highlighting the entire page right that's why I prefer reading the page first and then you can decide the most important one or two sentences to highlight so once I've finished reading the book from start to finish and I've highlighted all the most important ideas and concepts, I'll then spend 20 minutes or so rereading what I've just highlighted. Now, this part is important because the key to note-taking is not the note-taking itself. It's what comes after that. It's how you learn those notes because by rereading the most important areas that you just highlighted, you're kind of cementing what you just read into your long-term memory further. So once you've reread your main highlighted notes, or if you're using a physical textbook with sticky notes and labels, now you need to transfer the most important of those notes to your Notion database. Now, some people use Rome Research, some people use Google Keep, others use Obsidian, but I like to keep things super simple with a very basic Notion database, which I call my knowledge bank. And this is essentially where I write everything that I learn, whether it's books that I read or podcasts that I listen to, documentaries that I watch. And essentially, we just have four columns. We have the review column, because I review my knowledge bank at least once a month the main golden nugget headline. And this is nice because it forces you to kind of reword your notes into just one short sentence. Then there's the topic column. So which topic it fits into, whether it's business, psychology, web 3.0, productivity, economics, business, or general. And finally, the source for if I want to go back and see where I found that bit of information from. And if you want to add more details, some of your own comments maybe, or opinions, then you just open it up and add as much uh, to those notes as you'd like. And I love the simplicity of the knowledge bank, but I also love that it encourages me to reread my notes. So the first column of the knowledge bank is the review column. And I literally just tick each golden nugget after I've learned it. It's really that simple, right? The idea here is that you need to recap your notes periodically over a long period of time. So our memories are not that efficient. They're just not. They've been designed to lose information over time. So then it's our job to recap our notes, essentially using space repetition, right? To keep them fresh in our memory. Another reason why recapping and learning notes is so important, far more important than actually taking the notes in the first place, is because when you're taking notes, our cognitive load is already running at near full capacity. So our cognitive load just refers to the amount of brain power we're using, essentially. So it's difficult to take notes and memorize and learn the information at the same time. That's why you take the notes and then in a period after taking the notes, you then learn and absorb the notes because when we are using our cognitive load on note taking, we can't focus so much on learning at the same time. And also, if you take anything away from this video at all, let it be this, one of the most powerful things I do after reading a nonfiction book, whether it's a productivity book or a personal development book, is I write down one action that I will implement after finishing the book. Because I say it all the time, knowledge is not power, knowledge is potential power. It's only power if it is followed by action. So that's my power tip, if you like, for you for this video. And having your notes in a searchable database, my second power tip for you, when your notes are categorized and organized into individual topics, so you can go through them periodically at later dates, is essential. And the reason why I created my knowledge bank on Notion was because I was honestly 
quite fed up, I guess, of reading something in a book and then forgetting it just a few days later. It got me thinking over the years, how much golden knowledge have I lost just because I don't have a proper note-taking database. And that's why I designed it. The idea of the Knowledge Bank was to literally write everything that I learn so I can recap through the database every week to keep it fresh in my memory. And I talk more about it in another video I made recently called my number one productivity hack, self-education. No exaggeration, self-education has completely changed the trajectory of my life. I explain it more in that video. You can click on the card on the screen to watch that. Alternatively, I made another video called Seven Skills for Success. The skills they won't teach you at college. And spoiler, the first skill I talk about is dating. It's one of the biggest decisions you'll have to make in your life. So don't mess it up. Anyway, you can click on the card on the screen to watch that. And whichever video you choose, I'll see you over there.